Hey guys, good morning. Are you ready for garden tour week 13? Kate is ready. <laughs> so that intro was from this morning and then it proceeded to rain all day. Hurricane Ida hit Louisiana just, was it yesterday or like two days ago? I think it was yesterday. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was Sunday. Today is Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, August 31st. Um, and so we are now getting the tail end of that rain here in upstate South Carolina. So it's been raining all day and there's finally a break. And Krista showed up actually to help me film another video, which um, you guys will see later. But we got tipsy for that video. <laughs> and I was out here and I was like, Krista, do you want to shoot my garden tour with me? Yes. And she was like, yes. <laughs> um, so this is kind of more of an impromptu garden tour than I had anticipated. Um, but I hope you guys like it. And we will try and go through things in an orderly fashion as best we can. <laughs> Sounds good. Notice that those are pink on the underside. See? Oh, yeah. They are purple on the underside. Oh, did I say pink? You said pink. <laughs> well, it's kind of a pink or purple. I, I meant purple. <laughs> those are so pretty. Oh, is it only the big ones? I don't know. Or the, the ones in the sun, maybe? Yeah, sun probably has a lot to do with it, but also the stems of all of these beans are purple. Hmm. Interesting. So, as always, we will start with the tomatoes and the sunflowers. The basil here at the front, the purple basil, is looking a little more sad than usual. Um, and I think it's because as the leaves get older, they turn this greenish color. And I've been chopping the tops off consistently. So a lot of what is left is older leaves. Um, but I don't think that makes them inedible. It just makes them like a little tougher and not as pretty to eat. But I think it's still like perfectly fine basil. So the tomato patch is going a little bit wild right now. I was pruning it pretty consistently and now I am pruning it less consistently mostly because it reached the top of its trellis and I'm getting some suckers that are growing from lower down and weaving them back through up the trellis so that this area that I cleared out can still support maybe a few more tomatoes as we go on in the future. And I swear I picked some like this morning or maybe, no, it must have been yesterday morning. You can see already there are some more red tomatoes in there. So the sunflowers, now that they're dying off, it's a little easier to get back here. So anything pinky, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tipsy Chris is going to fall over in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I am surprised that I'm still standing and making sense. We'll, we'll, we'll watch the video and see how much sense we make. <laughs> yeah. You guys are really going to want to watch the pickle tasting video that we did. That's going to be coming out. I'm probably going to schedule it for Saturday of this week, whatever day that is. So today is Tuesday. This video is going to come out on a Wednesday. <laughs> And the following Saturday is when you can catch our pickle video. You look like you're in the middle of the jungle. I am in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> I'm going to try and do a better job of facing the mic this way this week because last week or the last time that you were on a tour, mm -hmm. I had to like do so much ducking of the sound oh. so that I could hear you and then hear me because oh. I only have a one directional mic right now. I don't even know if they make multi-directional mics but I'll have to know. look into it. Just subtitle me I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I actually never even thought of doing that. Yeah. The grass in front of the garden is getting very out of hand. I have tried pulling some of it up and putting it on top of itself but it is still very out of hand. I feel like next time you Next year, what if you went backwards? So what if you did everything and then tomatoes last? Because you don't want tomatoes at the bottom of your basket, but you do them first. Yeah. 
That's a problem. Um, that's a very good idea. The tomatoes, if you don't know, tomatoes at the bottom of your basket will squish. And for some reason, I start my tour every week at the tomato section and pick them and put them at the bottom of my basket under everything else. And that doesn't make any sense at all. And then, and then move them to the top halfway through. <laughs> I don't recommend picking your tomatoes first. Or or you could have a separate tomato basket. Well, yeah, that would also that be would nice. That would totally fix your problem. There yeah. we go. Basket Chris, shopping. Krista solved it. <laughs> How many tomatoes have you gotten so far? I have gotten six blushing tomatoes. Wow, that's so many. Yeah. Oh, I'm chasing one of the, the cats out of the garden. Aww. Not on purpose. He could be our friend if he wanted to. I wonder if that's all of them or if I just can't see them. It might be all of them because I did pick them recently. Okay. Um, are we doing the beans? Because I haven't been oh, doing the beans. Oh, yeah. Um, I also picked those recently, so there should be a few, but not that many. Okay. So, like I said last week, the three pole bean plants along the tomato row are actually enough fresh beans for just me to be eating. So, if you're thinking about how many beans you might need to plant for yourself, three pole bean plants per person. And that might even be on the high end to be honest. I mean, unless you're the sort of family that eats green beans every single day, um, in which case three is plenty. And if you're not, I would maybe go with two. But the only problem with cutting down, especially for me as a single person, somebody said in the comments last week, yeah, like a few plants is enough, but you run the risk of one plant not producing or something bad happening to it. And then you don't have enough. And so there's this like really weird balance you have to strike between having way too much food and actually having enough food. Like you have to have enough for the bugs to eat some and for some mistakes to happen and for one to randomly die, um, but not so many that you end up like me and you have so many that you can't even eat them all or give them all away. How many did you find? Very cute. Oh, okay. So I had a client the other day. I don't think I told you this, but I had a client the other day that came into me and she was like scraped up. She had scrapes on her forehead and she had this huge gash in her arm. And you, that's you always... have to tell them what you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> so I am a massage therapist. So, um, anyway, so yeah, I had these, this client that came in and she was all scraped up. And I asked her like, what happened to you? You kind of look like you've been in a rough situation. And she told me that she had gone out drinking with her friends. And then when she got home, she was pretty tipsy. And she went to harvest her garden afterwards and she fell face forward into her raised bed. And her tomato cage had like cut her arm and she had like face planted into it. And so she was looking rough. So we have to be more careful than that as we are slightly tipsy from our last video. That is so surprisingly relevant. I know. <laughs> it won't happen to us. It won't happen to us. <laughs> so the Antigua eggplants are not producing quite as much as the Nagasaki long right now. But as you can see, some of these plants are like shoulder height on me and they are continuing to grow. And I think I see some flowers on these Antiguas. And I think what's happening is similar to what happens with peppers where you pick all of their fruit, the plant thinks I haven't reproduced properly. And so it grows up bigger and then it tries to put on more fruit. And I think that is what's happening, especially with the Antigua, which means that the Nagasaki long are just a little bit behind on that because I'm still pulling a lot of fruit off of those. So I think in a couple of weeks, I will have a lot more of those stripy Antigua eggplants to harvest. At least the one that I looked at, it looked like the part that was being eaten was very small. Like I could see, here, let's see. Which one was he? Yeah, I agree. I've been seeing some more holes in the eggplants recently. 
And there's also, you can see more holes in the leaves too. Yeah. Um, but it's not like significant. Yeah, like if you look in and kind of turn it around. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how good I can I'm doing. See it. <laughs> okay. But it, it looks like it's only like a small section. So I feel yeah, like if you, cut, you cut, it, cut it, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. I have had this happen a couple of times now and I think like most of the eggplant is still fine. Yeah. Okay, I think that one's good. I think this one probably doesn't have any yet. Here's some of those cute little flowers. Do you want to move on to the peppers? Ah, uh, let me check this last one and then I'm oh, ready. Oh, okay. So I don't, not ready yet? Eh, this one could be ready. Like I said, the only downside to picking it early is that it's a little small. There, like that's it. That's the only downside. If you want the maximum amount of eggplant, then you have to wait until it stopped growing. But if you don't care to have the absolutely maximum sized eggplant, then picking it early can actually be nice because it might be a little tender. All right. What is your consensus? Go ahead and pick it. Okay. <laughs> I have so many eggplant. I do not need to maximize my eggplant volume right now. That's fair. That's fair. I'm just here to have fun. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, that's a compost baby. Oh no. I was telling y'all last week that um, even though it may seem like it, not every single pepper that comes from my garden is pretty and perfect. There are plenty that have been eaten by bugs, some that have just gone to mush on the vine, um, you know, and that's, that's okay. That happens to everybody, even the people who would like you to believe that they have perfect gardens. Um, so definitely don't feel bad if your garden is turning some fruits to mush. I, I would say feel lucky if like you get half of the fruits out of your garden. I think being a very successful gardener you get like 80 to 90 percent of your fruits but if you're just starting out if you get half of the fruits that your plants produce to be really beautiful and edible then that's quite an achievement in my opinion <laughs> because definitely the first few years that I was gardening I I had about a 50% success rate, specifically with tomatoes. That one is a funny shape. <laughs> what kind of, t of pepper is that? Do you know? Um, nope. <laughs> it is... What do the other ones look like on the plant? Okay, so the other ones look like this. That's Edgevarsky. Okay, yeah. That's but a really baby, tiny edge varsky. This one like curves out to the side. <laughs> very cute. Your shirt is actually a very similar color to most of the garden. <laughs> I kind of thought about that because we're doing like an evening tour and I'm wearing like black and then the color of the garden, but that's okay. I can be a floating head. <laughs> <laughs> is it still a novelty to you to harvest stuff from the garden or is it starting to get old? I don't, I don't know if it'll ever get old, especially since I don't have to do any of the weeding, you know? <laughs> like, I literally come and do the funnest part of gardening, so no, I don't think so. <laughs> that is such a relief because filming this tour is so much easier when I can talk and you can just do the stuff. Yes. No. Moody lighting is definitely okay, and especially with this camera, it is light adjusting, yeah. so you actually cannot tell how dark it is hmm. like it could be the, the middle of a cloudy day right now yeah. um the camera does a really good job of adjusting for the light levels i still really love the juxtaposition of the purple um jigsaw pepper next to the orange marigolds mm. and it's not just because we're close to clemson <laughs> <laughs> yeah if y'all didn't know i live very close to clemson South Carolina and the Clemson University colors are purple and orange and I also went to Clemson. I did my undergrad there and my master's degree there, neither of which I currently use for work. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> I am a physicist and bioengineer who is a digital marketing manager and a gardener. I feel like the Oda peppers have been the most productive of mm. 
like almost all the peppers in this area. But I also think that spicy peppers are a little more productive, or maybe it's just small peppers. Small peppers are more productive than larger peppers. And I cannot speak to the like actual volume of each because my sweet peppers are larger than my hot peppers. So maybe it evens out, but there are so many Oda peppers that I'm picking, dude. I think I'm gonna need to dry some and make like an Oda pepper powder. Ooh. Are they, they're a sweet pepper? They were, should have been a sweet pepper. But they're spicy. But they're spicy. And I think that's because the YouTuber that I got them from enjoys letting things cross. And that's totally fine. Um, it just makes it a little harder to plan ahead in terms of what I'm planting. They are cute though, aren't they? Yeah. Very cute. They start out this like really pretty purple color and then they turn red. And anything that's purple, y'all know it steals my heart. <laughs> okay, so we're putting the peppers that are not so hot in the compost bucket. And when I talked to you before, you had said that that means that after they're done composting, they might still be able to shoot up a plant. Yes. So if you're using this compost in your garden next year, how do you, what do you do with that? Is that like a happy accident? Do you pick them? It depends on your point of view. Yeah. Like if you want the volunteers, then that's great. If you have something that volunteers in a very inconvenient spot, you pull it. But if a pepper is volunteering out of your compost and you have planted both sweet and hot peppers, I would definitely assume that whatever volunteers is going to be hot just to be safe. Is hot pepper like the dominant trait? Yeah. Um, okay. It's like brown eyes versus blue eyes. Yeah. Brown eyes almost always went out. I mean, it's way more complicated than that at a genetic level, but when you think about the little thing that you learned in biology, brown eyes almost always wins out and hot pepper almost always wins out when there's a cross. I'm clipping this leaf that has a caterpillar on it. Can I put him in compost? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't fall, Krista. I am not going to scrape my head up like my poor client. <laughs> That's my goal for the day. Careful, careful. Look at how pretty these marigolds are. I love these ones that are like multiple colors. So this plant is so gorgeous. <gasps> I what? see a tomato hornworm. Oh my god. He's a big <gasps> boy. Good catch. It doesn't look like he's done much damage yet. Do they sting? I don't think so. I mean, I think you can pick him up and he won't like hurt you. Okay. Should I tell them about my caterpillar baby? Yeah, tell them. Okay. So guys, I don't know if you know what, oh boy, he doesn't want to come off. Yeah, they hold really hard. So I don't know if you know what a royal moth looks like or if you know what a hickory hornworm looks like, but in their caterpillar stage, they look so crazy and kind of scary, but they don't sting. Oh, he just peed on me. <laughs> um, they look, they have like these really big, big head horns and they have spikes all along their back and they're actually the US's biggest caterpillar. And I found one in my front yard and got very emotionally attached. And he was in a tree that he doesn't usually like, so I moved him to the tree that he likes better. And he disappeared, so I'm not sure if he got eaten or if, you know, he climbed up higher. But, so I do have a soft spot in my heart for caterpillars. So I'm gonna try to just move him far away where he can eat something else besides Rachel's garden. Where should I put him? <laughs> I would go with maybe the compost pile. Okay. Because there's going to be tomato bits in there. Yeah. Okay, then I'll put him in the compost bin. Bucket. I don't know if any of your other plants have as much fruit as this one does. Would well, you agree? I mean, yeah. This is doing much better than the Tabasco that's in the containers. But 
again, it's a hot pepper and it's making tiny little peppers. And because it's making small peppers, it can make a lot of them. Hmm. And this is going to be really pretty as soon as they all start changing because it's going to look like it's a flowering plant, I think. Yeah. You can already see these ones down here. Like, I think these ones at the bottom can be picked. You think? Yeah. I mean, just okay. try and pull them and see if they... No, don't clip them. Just... No, yank at the... Um, so, Tabascos are different. Okay. You yank at um, this part and ah. it detaches if it's ready. Right there. Yeah. I don't know if that's like the, the, the correct way to pick them, but I found that Tabascos oh. will detach super easily from their stems if they're ready. And if it's a little oh. stiff, then it's not quite ready. Okay. Sounds good. Then I think that might be all of these. And let's check this side. Yeah, Not I think quite. that's all of them. Okay. Five little babies. Cute. So we are about to bag up one of these big old sunflowers because it has basically run its course, its petals are falling off, and it's about to start making seeds, which the birds are really going to like, and I would like to have them instead. So, so the height of this, Krista is, how tall are you? Like five, four? Five, 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 five. six. Okay, Krista is five, six ish. And this sunflower has gone all the way up and curved back down to still be above her head. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in an outside shower <laughs> with the rain as well. So really immersive. <laughs> yeah. And so we're just gonna take a paper bag and tie it over the head. The point is to keep the birds out but not to keep the air out because if you keep the air out, it's going to mold and not dry out properly. So should I tie it like around here-ish? Whatever makes sense. It doesn't matter really how high up you go. Here, um, let me get the bugs off. Aw. Wow. So you're so brave. I don't usually touch those ones. I just shake whatever I'm holding <laughs> until they fall off. Okay, let's see. You'll have to tell me because you can see better than I yeah, can. Yeah, it's all the way over the head of it. And okay. maybe if you take the handles and tie them together, that will be good enough. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I'm using my tiny pocket again to hold this string. So let's see. Okay. That's... Do we need, do we need Devin? Are we too short? I don't know. Can we do it? <laughs> I'm gonna try, I think, to just like scrunch it. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's working pretty well. Okay. Does that look good? Yeah, that actually looks really great. Okay, I'm trying to bow it. <laughs> oh! Okay. Well. <laughs> Well, don't be so rough with your string, is the moral no. of the story. This, this string is not the best string. This is the string that has broken on the tomatoes twice now. Okay. I'm just too strong. <laughs> okay, how does that look? It looks great. Okay, good, good, good. So, my row of beans that is way too long I am not picking from currently because there were too many for me to keep up with. And so right now these are waiting until they get mature and I'm going to pick them when they could be dried beans and or seeds. I'm going to have to test and see if they're actually good to be edible as dried beans. Um, but they will at least be seeds and I will have a lot of those. And one of you suggested that I do a seed giveaway if that is the case. And so I am thinking about that currently. I don't know what's gonna happen with it, so don't count on it. But if I do have an excess of seeds, I do think that that would be a really nice thing to do. Do you wanna go ahead and pick this pumpkin? Yes. So there has been this pumpkin that grew into this patch. Oh, I'm gonna fall. <laughs> this patch of grass. Not today. Um, and you would think that I had pulled out the pumpkin vine already, but I have not. It has just died back because the squash bugs are so relentless. This is the first pumpkin that grew on that vine. And I'm sure that the vine has like, oh my god, there's so many squash bugs on it. 
It is a lot of squash balls. Hold on while I zoom. Oh man. But you were talking about how the vine will detach and the vine has detached. Sure, but I am not so sure that that is um, because it is done or because it has been eaten and slash mm. died. Although the test that you can do to yeah. see if a pumpkin is ready is to stick your fingernail in the skin just a little bit and see if it's tough. If your fingernail can poke through the skin real easily, then it is not done. If it feels like a normal pumpkin skin and it's got like a little bit of spring back, then it's probably ready. All right, I think it is ready. Yeah, and there's a pumpkin I picked yesterday that was younger than this one and felt ready. So this one is probably ready. Okay. It's very green, isn't it? It is green. I think the pumpkin oh. that I planted was white. Wait, it's connected on the bottom? Well, it could have just grown upside down. I don't know how pumpkins work. <laughs> oh, okay, so I lied. It was connected underneath. Oh, it has some slugs too. Oh, is it eaten? Ah, uh, it looks, I don't know. Is this eaten? It's speckledy, but it's just like the skin. I might be able to be washed. We'll have to check that out. Oh, look at all those slugs. Oh, this, this thing right here uh -huh. is an invasive worm. Yikes, is it that, that hammerhead worm? I think so, let's pick him out. I've heard terrible things about hammerhead worms. They look really cool, um, but I, I'm pretty sure they're invasive and they're not really good. That's also what I've heard. Oh yeah. Oh, I think I just broke him. Oh no, 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 you have to kill every single part of him, otherwise he will split himself. Okay. I would put him on the stone and then stomp him. Well, let's find his head. Did I cut his head off already? They're really long. That That's his head right there. Oh yeah. You can see the flat head, hammer head worm. But look, this was one worm I believe, because I think I just cut him in half. Um, but so he was this long and then all of that. Yeah, I would just stomp him dead. Oh, there's another one in I here. I think he's terrible for the garden. There's one wrapping itself Yeah. around. And you can see how the stem of this looks like very dead. Um, I think that a, a vine borer might have gotten to the stem already. Okay. There's his mate. <laughs> he kind of blends in with the grass cuttings. Yeah. Such a weird flat head. This one is escaping. You better yeah. get him. Okay. <laughs> Don't show me killing him. That would be sad. Okay. Okay. The murder was not was not filmed, but we we're now picking off the slugs. And then I would take this inside and like lightly rinse it. You don't really want to scrub your squash because you don't want to damage the skin if you're trying to store them. Um, and as long as this doesn't have any holes in it, then it should keep for quite a while. I don't think it does. I don't. I don't know what you would categorize those. Like it looks like something was definitely eating this, at this it. This like scratches off. Look at that. Oh. Okay. What do you, what is that then? I have no clue. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Don't mind me taking a nature's bath. Okay. So this one is also covered in squash bugs. It is. I guess they probably moved from the leaves to the squash, do you think? Yeah, I think because they killed all the leaves. So are we waiting for him? Oh, he just attached. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Do you want a close up of the, the <laughs> evildoers? These are squash bugs. If you see these in your garden, kill them with no mercy. All of them. <laughs> I didn't expect that to work so well. I didn't either. I didn't kill them, but... Are there any holes in it? Um, well, there's um, that. That looks like a soft spot, but it's not a hole. So I don't know what you would categorize that. That looks suspicious. I would cook it sooner rather than later. Yeah, that's the only spot we have is right there. You look at your little pocket with the, with the clippers in it. It's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Okay, so there was this cocoon. And inside, I know this because of my caterpillar baby, 
but I think this is called the pupa. Uh-huh. So the part that I just accidentally dropped would have been the skin of the caterpillar, right? And then this is the pupa. So this is, it turns hard on the inside and squiggles out of its like caterpillar skin and it turns into this. Um, and I only really looked up the, the one that I had, but the one that I had was interesting because it actually goes into the dirt. So this one does not. So I'm, well, <laughs> I was gonna put him on the ground and now he's on the ground so yeah I would say just let him live on the ground and he'll probably hatch out if he's anything like the um, hickory hornworm he will hatch out next summer um, I don't know but he is where he should probably be now <laughs> oh there is a guardian wasp I've actually not been stung by any wasps this year at all even though they're guarding my noodle beans <laughs> very ferociously. Um, I'm gonna do something really stupid. You mean brave. I don't know, I don't wanna disturb my cute little wasp friend. Like this is, this is his home. They like to hang out right at the top where I click. clip. Yay! Yeah, so these are ready to pick for seeds or dried beans because you can see that they're big and leathery and you can also feel that the seed kind of moves around inside of them. And so at that point they're no longer good to eat for food but the beans inside are mature. And what I've been finding is if you wait for them to dry out they start to mold outside and then you can't use them at all. So I am my new strategy is to pick them at about this stage and bring them inside and then peel them to dry because also if you leave them inside and you pile them on top of each other because you're careless like me they will also <laughs> mold <laughs> so let's see how many of these we can get oh that's a that's a very large spider web oh no I'm sure that looked silly as hell. <laughs> brave, Rachel, brave. So this one is, is pretty moldy, but its friend is not. Hmm. Oh, the hornworm is still in there. <laughs> he looks like he's enjoying himself. He's probably having a feast. So my baby beans are growing. So something has already eaten this one. Um, oh my gosh, this one is like entirely eaten down. <laughs> Poor little buddy. But that's kind of what happens in the middle of summer. So these will grow up very fast. I think 50 days is a good estimate for harvesting from these. And these are, what are these? Um, I think these are Kentucky pole beans. So they'll be green, really standard pole beans. Hello. Oh, that was a bad shot. <laughs> Remind me where I should walk. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Wherever you want because it is all falling to pieces. I find it easier to come around on this side because it's mostly more barren because the squash has died back. Um, oh wow, there's a, there's a falling corn. I picked most of the corn actually. I think this is pretty much done. Some of it is very pretty. If you saw last week's video, I actually had some that looks very much like strawberry popcorn, which I am very excited to try popping. Do I bring the storm? Because I feel like last time I was with you, it stormed. Maybe, maybe you do bring the storm. 
That's sad because I love the sunshine. But <laughs> the rain is so good for the garden. Okay, okay, fair, fair, fair. Oh, did you see this sunflower? <gasps> With the bee on it, that is so gorgeous. It's like a perfect baby. Oh. So, since the second side trellis has fallen, I told you all last week that I picked all the green tomatoes because if I didn't that they were going to rot and so that is the plan again now that this second side has fallen we're gonna pick some green tomatoes and get a harvest instead of getting half a harvest and getting red ones because I can make perfectly good salsa out of green tomatoes So we're gonna go dump the compost and then we are going to go check out the potted plants and then we will be done. This is my very makeshift compost pile. I don't know if I've ever shown you guys before. You should take out the horn room. I did, I'm gonna put him on top. Here we go. Cute. Okay, so last thing we have to check on are all of the potted plants, which are in this dense forest of grass, because as you can see, the grass is finally cut, and it was not so happy underneath because it got so tall. Um, I'm not sure how much there is to pick over here. I looked the other day, and it doesn't look super red. Like, maybe there's, like, one right there. Ready? Yeah. Um... I think there might be some on the other side. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but basically, I've been neglecting this area. As I, I've been kind of neglecting the whole garden because, dude, it's like so much to take care of. You have a lot going on in your life right now. That's true. If y'all didn't see last week's garden tour, there is, um, yes, that's, that's good. There's um, a little bit of life stuff in there that's been going on, and I'll let you go back and watch that if you care. But, yeah, I haven't been out here as much taking care of the garden, and it shows. Well, this poor basil. It's also, like, kind of near the end of the season for some of these plants. Um, and so some of them are going to naturally start coming to a close. And some of them are in between, right? So, like, I was talking about flushes with the eggplant. Some of these pepper plants are looking like they don't have that much fruit on them but actually are about to grow up and put on a whole nother flush, probably, they probably have enough time before it freezes here because our first frost is November 3rd on average. And so I'm sure, but it's the end of August, so that's September, October, they have two months to put on more peppers, which I think is totally doable. Last year I had some that were very late. Look at this little baby. Aww. I have found like towards the end of the season that fruit begins to get more and more misshapen. Huh. Oh, this is this is the one that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. That looks like a flowering plant now that all of them are turning pretty colors. Yes. Look at this Malabar spinach. It comes from here, but it has taken over this whole entire cage. I wish I actually liked Malabar spinach. This grew on accident, but it's like, it is a summer spinach that grows in the heat and it's a little mucusy the way that okra is mucusy and I've learned that I don't really like that so much. So this is just growing because I didn't have the heart to pull it out. It is very pretty though and eventually these will get to be purple and they'll be really pretty. I feel like every time I help you pick, I ask the same question. So this one, um, remind me what it is. Is it cayenne? It is cayenne. Okay. And so this is ready, right? Because it's red? Yes. And I pull it away? Mm-hmm. Up and it, away from the curve. It doesn't feel ready, maybe. Oh, no. There it goes. It, sometimes they will feel not as ready after right after it rains because the plant will be wet. Okay. Oh, look at this. Right in here is this pepper. It is finally ready. 
from this plant that I overwintered and has looked incredibly sad all summer and has made a small little baby Edgevarsky <laughs> pepper. <laughs> Was it worth housing? <laughs> no. <laughs> This, this overwintering experiment was not worth it to me. Mm. But maybe if I was better at it, it would be. Yeah. Hi, Kata. Meow. Alrighty, that is all we have for you today. Remember, a new garden tour comes out every Wednesday, pending no serious life events. <laughs> Um, thank you, Krista, for doing this with me, for doing two videos with me today. Yeah, this is a very Krista-filled week, so I And hope... potentially a third. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you will be seeing a lot of Krista. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed. If you like what you see, please do subscribe, and I will see you next time. So, until then, I wish you all happy gardening. Happy gardening. I was already <laughs> waving them off. <laughs> you have something in your teeth. Is it pickled? It's, mm -hmm. it's like a black thing. One more. There you go. Yeah, mo I think most of the. Oh, I started it after. <laughs> after I did it. You know what you're doing. <laughs> I think you're still recording. Am I really? Oh wait, no. I just started it.